Hello and welcome to my channel. I am the Mad Computer Scientist. On this channel, I discuss math, computer science, and technology topics that are of interest to me. Before we get into today's video, I would like you all to do me a favor. Please remember to hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, be sure to smash that subscribe button. And once you do that, be sure to ring that notification bell so you will always get the latest updates for this channel. If you have been browsing Twitter, something I do not recommend, you may have noticed something that is a bit of a troubling trend. At least it's a bit of a troubling trend if you realize what large language models are designed for, and realize that Grok is essentially just a front-end for ChatGPT, despite all of Elon Musk's claims. What is this troubling trend, you might ask? It is simply this, it's that a lot of people are using Grok as a fact-checking tool, rather than understanding what the limits of large language models are. Because of the way we use the language, I think a lot of people think Grok actually thinks, rather than what it is really doing, which is essentially solving a version of the traveling salesman problem where they're trying to find the longest path through a graph. And I know I've probably lost people on that one, so let me explain what the traveling salesman problem is. The traveling salesman problem is a computer science problem and a graph theory problem where most of the time you're trying to find the shortest path through a graph. What ChatGPT does instead is give weights to certain words based on context and then tries to find the path with the greatest distance, i.e. the path that uses the greatest number of weights. And yes, this is an oversimplification. Kyle Hill actually has a much better video on how this works, but even he's oversimplifying it a bit. And keep in mind, it's hard to know exactly what ChatGPT is doing because these algorithms are proprietary. For those of you who are interested in this sort of thing, the traveling salesman problem is also in the set of NP problems. ChatGPT uses tools like statistics and linear matrix algebra to do this. Now, while I am impressed with what large language models like ChatGPT and Grok can do when it comes to producing text that sounds like a human might have produced it, the fact is that is all they are designed to do. They are not designed to give you the correct answer, and people are relying on these tools a little too much as search engines. And while I can understand this from a human perspective, where we don't necessarily want to wade through search results in order to find what we're looking for, something that used to be easier before Google got too commercial, it also has a downside. Because Google is at least trying to get us to the answers we're looking for, it can usually get us to where we go if we do a little digging around. ChatGPT is just going to come up with a response based on what the prompt is, and our prompts often feed our own unconscious biases into it. This alone would not concern me too much if it weren't for another problem that large language models like ChatGPT and Grok are well known for, and that's their tendency to hallucinate. Now, hallucinate, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, does not mean the same thing it does when humans use the term. In this case, it simply means the large language model is giving us the wrong answer. In fact, there is a well-known genre of content right now where people post the links of their favorite large language model giving outright dangerous information such as Google suggesting people put glue on pizza. The problem is that people assume that these tools are going to give them the right answer more often than not, even though hallucinations are a well-known problem with large language models. Right now, I am looking at a webpage from the University of Arizona reminding students who use large language models and other artificial intelligence tools that they always need to fact check. In fact, the well-known Khan Academy has an AI tool that they let teachers use, but they remind the teachers that the teacher is the expert and the teacher needs to fact check whatever the Conmigo AI produces. The University of Arizona webpage that warns about fact checking goes on to say that while the fact checking capability of these tools are certainly improving as researchers work on this problem, that it may not be eliminated entirely, no matter how well the researchers do, especially if the large language models are using internet sources 
which themselves may contain a lot of misinformation. I think part of the confusion here comes from how AI researchers talk about the AI they produce and how the general public understands it. Researchers and computer scientists know that the goal of AI is to simulate human intelligence, not to actually reproduce it. But a member of the general public hears terms like think, decide, and reason, and doesn't understand that it's just a mathematical model that's being run through to see which words are most likely to come next in the text, at least in the case of large language models. There are other AI methods that work differently, such as random forests and decision trees, which are actually relatively easy to implement in Python. Perhaps if computer scientists were a little more precise in their language, or if more people actually read Turing's paper where he first discusses the idea of what artificial intelligence would mean, they would understand that computer scientists aren't necessarily using the terms the way they would be used in casual conversation, and to be fair, computer science is not the only academic discipline that has the problem where the researchers in a field use words in one way, and members of the general public continue to use the colloquial definitions. In fact, I am guilty of this myself, especially for fields that aren't fields I've studied. What I think we need to do right now is start educating people, especially students and people online, about why they shouldn't use large language models such as Grok as a fact-checking tool, or if they do, they should always follow it up with independent sources that can easily be verified. And because of the way large language models worked, the source might actually be one of the sources the large language model used, because it is often not clear where the LLMs got their source, and more importantly, large language models have been known to fabricate sources in the past. I hope you will take the time to actually go through and fact check something you run through a large language model before assuming that the text something like ChatGPT gives you should be taken as gospel truth. And now it is time to bring this to a close. I hope this has given you something to consider and you know why you should not rely on ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, and similar programs as fact-checking tools in the future. Or at least if you're going to use them that way, I hope you do independent fact-checking from multiple sources. Thank you for listening to this rant. If you would take the time to like, comment, and subscribe, I would appreciate it. And be sure to leave a comment down below. If you find this content useful, please share it out with your friends, family, and, I don't know, maybe even your worst enemy. Until next time, go write some code.